Welcome to the video. My name is Alex and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today I'm going to show you how you can use parameters in your Fabric notebooks and run them as part of your data pipelines in Fabric. And now, without further ado, let's fire up the Fabric and let's see how this is done. Now we have the Fabric open here. Let's first create a new notebook and let's name our notebook according to our naming conventions. And now let's add some values to our notebook that we are going to use as parameters for this notebook. Let's add three variables, parameter 1, parameter 2 and parameter 3. The parameter 1 value will be a string and then the parameter 2 value will be an integer and the parameter 3 value will be a boolean value, meaning true or false. Then let's add a second cell and just print out those three parameters. So we can see what are the values for those when the notebook actually executes. And we can define this first cell to be a parameter cell by hovering our mouse over it and then choosing the three dots from this menu that opens to the right hand side. And there we can see toggle parameter cell option. So we have to click that. And now we have defined this to be the parameter cell for this notebook. Now we can actually add this notebook to a pipeline in order for us to see how we can use these parameters. Let's click the add to pipeline button and let's select new pipeline. This will create a new pipeline and it will automatically add this notebook to our pipeline. Let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. And here we can see that we have already this notebook activity added to this pipeline. Let's name this activity according to our naming conventions as well. And then we can open up the settings tab for this notebook. And we can see that this notebook is already pointing to our notebook that we want to use. And we can see that we have these base parameters available here. And here we can configure the parameters for this node. And here we have to use the exactly the same names for these parameters that are used for the variables in the notebooks for everything to work correctly. So let's first add parameter 1 and let's define it as string type. Then add parameter 2 and let's define it as int or integer type. And then let's add parameter 3 and let's define it as boolean type. Now we can add some values for these parameters that are going to be different compared to those values that we set as default values for these in the notebook. And now we should have configured everything correctly so we can hit the run button and see what happens. Running this notebook will actually take quite a while so I will speed things up and let's hop into the future when the notebook has already completed. Now the notebook has already completed and we can check out what has happened. From this data factory or data pipeline view, we do not get much information about things that happened. We can only see that this notebook succeeded. And now we can go back to our notebook and open up the all runs page to see the runs that have happened for this notebook. Here we can see only one run that has happened and that was the one that we triggered from the data factory. And by clicking this application name here, we can open up the logs. Here we can find a lot of technical information related to the execution, but we're not going to cover this section entirely in this video. We want to navigate to the item snapshot page where we can see what happened during the actual execution in the notebook itself. And here we can see what has happened. We can see that the notebook execution actually created a new cell under that parameter cell and replaced the parameter values with the new values coming from our pipeline parameters. And since the variable names for these parameters are exactly the same that we have defined in the parameter cell, these parameters will actually overwrite the values that we have set as default for those. And in this print cell, we can see when we print out those parameters, we get the values coming from the data factory and not those default values that we defined first. Also, here in the below, we can see the input parameters that were given as parameters for this notebook. If you found this video helpful and learned something new, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and Fabric content. Also, if you have any suggestions that you would like to see me cover in the upcoming videos, leave some comments to the comment section down below. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.